conference. I'm old enough to have had grandfathers who served in the First World War. One was in the Navy, one was in the Army. Edgar Pickles was a soldier, one of the pals that came out of the mill towns of the north of England. He looked a bit like me. Handsome chap. <laughs> I wasn't thinking to put it to a vote. That great man who brought so much laughter into my youth was wounded at the Battle of the Somme and carried a disability with him for the rest of his days. In this year of the centenary of the start of the Great War, my thoughts often drift back to what it must have been like for my grandparents. We want to honour the dead and their sacrifice, but we also want to remember those who survived the trenches, came back, raised children, and worked hard to make the country what it is today. Across government, we've organised many projects to, uh, to make sure we never forget the sacrifice. Battlefield tours for schools, displays, exhibitions, and simple acts of remembrance. In my department, we're very proud that over the next four years, councils across the country will be laying paving stones in every community where a Victoria Cross hero lived. Some will be next to memorials, but most will be a paving stone on the road where the VC hero lived. Why have we done it? To show in the clearest possible way that out of ordinary streets and ordinary lives come extraordinary people. As Community Secretary, I see every week that it is people of courage that make this country what it is. Whether it's a community leader that speaks out against extremism or sectarian division, or those who refuse to be cowed by anti-Semitism or anti-Muslim hatred, it's those people, alongside our institutions of liberty and rule of law, that make this country what it is. Now, as an Englishman, I'm proud to be part of the United Kingdom, in which Scotland is a vibrant and powerful partner. After the referendum result, without holding back on more devolved powers to Scotland, the case for fairness for England must be heard in parallel. In the mother of parliaments, we can't have platinum card wielding Scottish MPs who can vote for measures in England, in English constituencies, but not in their own Scottish seats. If I vote for a change in the NHS, or schools, or housing, I have to bear the consequences of my vote. I have to look the electorate of Essex in the eyes and justify my actions. Not so Scottish MPs, who have power without responsibility in England. And we all know that power without responsibility never ends well. So the time has come for change. The time has come for English votes on English laws. We can be proud that a Conservative Prime Minister, David Cameron, is determined to deliver fairness to England and to all of the nations of the United Kingdom. Of course, it's not a surprise that Labour just don't get it. After all, it was my department under John Prescott who thought the electorate could be palmed off with regional government. The public saw right through an empty offer and decisively rejected it. Whatever the problem, any solution that involves taxpayers funding more politicians is definitely not the answer. You know, we want 
equality for England. Labour want jobs for the boys. In contrast to Labour's top-down control, my purpose in government has been to bring power to the people. Devolution is not about new names for old quangos, but real power to real communities. And that's what we've achieved. Whether it's by freezing the council tax and handing the public the final say on council tax rises, giving power and decisions to people about their neighbourhood plans so local communities can shape the place where they live, enabling councils to share services and management to cut costs, and reducing the size of government. We've carried these through even in my own department, where we've reduced the workforce by 60%. We now have so few civil servants that just this summer we handed back the keys of our old expensive offices and I'm now hot desking with Theresa May in the Home Office to save taxpayers £9 million a year. <laughs> I'm sure she's very happy. Real savings, that's what we promised, and that's what we've delivered. You know, the thing that I'm most proud of, and it's been the most difficult to deliver, is what we've achieved on housing. All Conservatives understand that what a home means for a family. That's why it was our party who first put ownership within the grasp of working people. We've always believed that aspirations should be rewarded. For 13 years, Labour just didn't think it mattered. They were wrong. The Labour government gave us regional spatial strategies, top-down planning, ticky-tacky boxes with no planning or garages and no room for our kids to play. Under Labour, house building fell to the lowest peacetime levels since the 1920s. It was a disgrace. But it could be worse. We now have Mr Miliband's 10-year plan. More housing quangos, rent controls, land tax, land grabs, and a new homes tax. These are yesterday's policies that even yesterday didn't work. Rather than set national targets for home ownership and house building, we're getting on with delivering. 200,000 affordable homes have been delivered under this government. More council houses have been built under this government than under 13 wasted years of labor. Our help to buy scheme has already supported 53,000 families. The reinvigorated right to buy has helped 20,000 families achieve their ambition of home ownership. And today, I am delighted to announce that in the last year, a total of 230,000 homes received planning permission in England alone. And conference, that's on the top of thousands of redundant buildings which have been converted into new homes. And we're going to do more. You know, our job isn't just to repair the mess that Labour left. Our job is to do better for all the young people desperate to get on the housing ladder and for parents desperate to see their children fly the nest. This is our commitment to you. This government is going to help you. For future generations who work hard and want to get on, we make a commitment. We will support you to buy your first home. On Saturday, 
the Prime Minister announced that Conservatives will support an extra 100,000 first-time buyers get their foot on the housing ladder through a new help-to-buy starter home scheme. We are also introducing a new rent-to-buy scheme to help young people save for a deposit before they buy their home. Real help when you need it. Just as Mrs Thatcher's government helped people with right to buy, so David Cameron is taking forward that spirit of aspiration. <laughs> I'm proud of what our, what our department, our ministers, our councillors, our party, have achieved over the past four and a half years. Cutting council tax, saving taxpayers money, improving services and making more accountable to the people we serve. Helping people buy their homes, improve their community and care for their loved ones. But in a few short months, all that we've achieved could be wiped out by labour who want to apply the policies of yesterday. You know, Labour has not learned their lesson, but I can give you our clear commitment. We will never forget the deficit. We... <laughs> we will never forget hard-working people. We will never forget the sacrifices that have been made to overcome Labour's neglect conference together we will build a Britain where people can have the security of owning their own home with access to good services and decent quality of life our aim both locally and nationally is to build a conservative Britain that we can all be proud of thank you